बैक ट्रैकिंग इज नथिंग बट लेट लेट मी एक्सप्लेन यू विद्प ऑफ एन एग्जाम्पल ओवर हियर लेट से यू आर गिवेन दिस नोट करेक्ट ए फ्रॉम हियर यू आर हैविंग यू आर गोइंग टू बी फ्रॉम हियर यू आर गोइंग टू सी देन फ्रॉम हियर यू आर गोइंग टू डी देन फ्रॉम हियर यू आर गोइंग टू ई फ्रॉम हियर यू आर गोइंग टू एफ मेक सेंस एंड लेट से फ्रॉम बी यू आर गोइंग टू टी मेक सेंस नाउ बेसिकली वॉट हैपन्स इज लेट से वॉट डिड आई स्टेट यू रिमेंबर अगेन बैक ट्रैकिंग इज नथिंग बट रिकर्शन दैट्स इट but on the top of recursion there is one simple trick which gets applied which distinguishes back tracking from recursion right i am going to show you that part as well but follow this very carefully because again we have discussed multiple times the tricks related to the recursion and again over here recursion is going to get used but one additional thing we are going to i am going to discuss it over here so let's see so the thing is that you guys know that right whenever we are making any function call correct this function call is valid for each and every node this part is clear to each and every one of you right whenever you are making a function right and let it be a recursive function call let's say you are making this from this function you are calling this function itself correct you are having a before this and you are having c before this function can you guys see so this part will be executed for a b d t each and every node that is there right this function is going to get executed does this thing make sense to each and every one of you so now basically when you are starting from node a correct then after that what you will do you are making a recursive function call let's say you are going to b now what happens you will come to b now from b let's say you are coming to d now you are coming to t now from a you are coming to c you are coming to e you are coming to f so the thing is that from this specific node a you are making sure that you are trying to visit each and every node correct so as a result of which what you are doing let's say when you are making you are visiting a certain node right what you do you mark visit node is equals to true correct why do we mark visit node is equals to true so that this node doesn't get visited again and again and again are you guys able to understand this point this thing we did in dfs also correct so we marked this specific node as true while visiting from a let's say you are going to b and now you have marked true for b now from b you are going to d now you are marking true from d you are coming back to b then you will visit t again you are marking it as true correct similarly you are marking each and every node as true now the thing is that let's say once you have visited all the node for a correct now after doing the recursive function call now what you need to do you need to mark that specific node as false follow this very carefully why you will mark this specific node as false because for this specific node a this is marked as true because when you are starting node is equals to a right so for this node a you are marking b is equals to true d is equals to true correct because from node a it has been visited but let's say you are again exploring your starting node is equals to e correct when you are starting from node e in that case you could you don't have to you have to visit this node b again right because this is your fresh new node so as a result of which as i stated what is a back tracking it is an algorithmic approach which uses the brute force approach so again you need to visit that node otherwise if you don't mark this visit node is equals to false then you will check that okay if this this specific node has been visited or not so you will check that yeah this node has already been visited so as a result of which from this node e you cannot visit that node are you guys able to follow that is why once you are done with that specific node right once the recursive function call is done mark this specific node as false and this is what a back tracking approach is basically visit a node by marking it as true as simple as that make recursive function call and then again after that mark visit node is equals to false because you are marking it as false because again you can visit this node from the other node correct so for that reason you are marking this node as false so that that specific node could be revisited again so this is the simple trick which is involved in back tracking that's it otherwise all the trick related to the recursion remains the same this marking after making the recursive function call marking this node as false this is what back tracking is that's it does this thing make sense to each and every one of you
Did you guys follow what I explained or anyone has any doubt over here? So Ranjan, in this case, the you know the very first node should be marked as false, or all the you know repeated node node should be marked as false. See, as I stated, right? Obviously, there is going to be a, some starting node, correct? When your starting node is equal to A, so from when you are starting from A, or when you are visiting node B, right? In that case, you will mark it as true, correct? From B, what you will do? You will make again recursive function call. Then you will mark D as true, correct? When you visit T, you will mark it again as true, right? But now, what happens if when you backtrack? Backtrack means you know, right? You are going back to the parent from where you are coming. Are you getting my point? Now, when you are going back to your parent, so the thing is that again, parent will try to visit all other node that is there, correct? And after that, once you make sure that all the nodes have been visited, then you have to mark it as false, so that now your starting node is going to be different. It initially it was A, right? Now it could be E. So let's say if you are marking all the node as true when you are visiting from node A, will that node be again visited from E? No, it will not be visited. Right? Why? Right? Why? Because you have marked that node as true. But in this case, you need to mark that as false, right? If it is not visited, don't then only you will try to visit. Otherwise, why will you revisit it again and again and again? Did you get my point? So oh, this yeah. is the technique of backtracking. Remember what we did in dynamic programming? The approach which we took was we were using a memoization technique. We were just memorizing things, right? To don't visit remaining sub problem again and again. Again, recursion was there. But in this case, in backtracking, what we are doing? We are first visiting the node, making the recursive function call to visit all the adjacent nodes that is there, and then after that again. Before going back to the parent function call, we are again marking that specific node as false, so that that specific node could be visited from other node. That's it. Does this thing make sense to you? Oh yes. Otherwise, if you will not mark that as false, so that specific node won't be able to reach from other node. But your target is that you are trying to find out all possible combination, right? Let me give you a simple example. Let's say. You are currently in Srinagar. From there, you want to go to Delhi. From there, you want to go to Bhopal. And then from there, you want to go to Mumbai. So now the thing is that you are trying to find out all the possible combinations via which you can try to reach Mumbai. Are you getting my point? So now let's say you are starting from Srinagar, correct? So when you are starting from Srinagar, you are going to Delhi. Now from Delhi, what is going to happen is you obviously you are trying to visit Bhopal. From Bhopal, what you are trying to do, you are going to Mumbai. Now when you are visiting Mumbai, now as soon as you are backtracking, remember we used to backtrack, right? So the thing is that from Srinagar, when you are starting from Srinagar, Delhi, Bhopal, then you are marking it Mumbai as true, correct? Because from Bhopal you have reached. But now when you are starting backtracking, right? So in that case, simply mark this Mumbai as false, stating that it is not been visited. Because let's say any person who is there in Delhi, right, he will try to reach Mumbai. But if the Mumbai node is marked as true only, if you don't mark it false, it will be marked as true only. So the guy from Delhi won't be able to reach Mumbai because you need that that specific node should be marked as false. Then only it is going to get visited. So when you are visiting Mumbai, when your task, what you are trying to do in Mumbai is done, when you are backtracking back to its parent function call, right, simply mark that again as false. So that it could be revisited. Are you getting my point? Are you getting the logic of why we are marking that specific node as false before going back to the parent function call? That is the reason. So that each and every node will get an opportunity to visit the node. That's it. Does this thing make sense to you guys? Guys, if it is clear, then respond with yes. If not, then respond with no and ask me questions. Uh, so, if we are going from Delhi to Mumbai and when we are returning, Mumbai, Bhopal, Delhi, all will be marked false, right? I mean, Can you repeat your question? When we are visiting from Delhi, we are going to Bhopal. And from uh -huh. Bhopal, we are going to Mumbai. 
Yeah. Then when returning Mumbai visit will be false. Bhopal also will mark visit as false and Delhi exactly. also. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So basically you are absolutely correct. So who caught this? So now when you're backtracking, right? So before when you're going back to the parent function call, just mark that specific node as false. So that there is a chance that when you are starting from a new node, right? Again, you can revisit it. Are you getting my point? Yeah. So when you're backtracking it, before backtracking it, just mark that as false so that from new node you can revisit it. Otherwise, if you will not leave mark that as false, it will be re it will not be revisited again. Are you getting my point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is the simple trick that is involved in the backtracking. That's it. Because you want that specific node to be visited from every possible node. That's it. Okay. Is this thing clear to each and every one of you? If anyone is having any slightest motor doubt, feel free to ask me. Let me give you a very simple example. Just let's take Srinagar. This is your function, correct? You are having node. So what you were doing over here, you are marking visited Srinagar is equal to true. Okay. Then after that, what you are doing, you are making a recursive function call. Let's say you are now visiting Delhi. Now the thing is that again, when you are visiting Delhi, right? So over here, what you will do? You will mark visit Delhi is equal to true. Okay. Then after that, what you're trying to do? You're trying to mark Bhopal. Visited Bhopal is equal to true. Okay. Now leave Mumbai as of now. So now when you're backtracking, right? Before backtracking it, so what you're going to do? Since now no more node is there. So you're making this Bhopal is equal to false. And then you're going back to the parent function call. Now when you're coming to this, this recursive function call is done, correct? So now after that, what you will do? You will mark Delhi is equal to false. And then you're backtracking it. Now, over here, what you are doing? You are marking Srinagar is equal to false. Correct? So, this is how the functionality is. Before going back to its parent function call, simply mark that as false. As simple as that. Why you are marking that as false? So that that specific node could be revisited again. Because you don't want to visit that node which has already been visited. That is a simple logic. Does this thing make sense to you guys? Come on, guys, respond to something. Yeah, yes. Oh, yes. As the name suggests, backtracking, right? So you are trying to basically cover all the possible combination that's there, as simple as that. How you are doing that? By backtracking it. And you already know in recursion what happens when you are traversing from one function to the another function, right? We have already discussed in depth, in huge depth. Recursion, DFS, while we were discussing binary tree, then again during uh, dynamic programming, we discussed in then huge depth. So again, this thing is over here what we are doing when you're just backtracking, just mark that specific node as false so that you can cover all possibilities that's there, as simple as that. And again, this problem would be again, we are, we'll just boil down to recursion and you guys are already aware, I have already discussed the tips and the tricks, how you guys should approach recursion problem. So when this is going to revolve around that, the only thing which you need to take care of it, when you're marking a specific node as visited, then in order to backtrack it, simply mark that as not visited before going back to the parent function call. And this visited, not visited, this is just as an example which I took, right? Sometimes depending on the problem, you will see that, okay, you need to add that specific element into let's say your temporary array, and then you need to remove that specific element in, from your temporary array. Just like visited, not visited, right? So over here, what you're doing, so the analogy is going to remain the same. Let's say if you're dealing with some array number, right? And you're asked to find out all the possible array which you could form. So what you will do? Before, back, before making a recursive function call, you will try to add a certain number, right? Make a recursive function call. After the recursive function is being the over, then before going back to the parent function call, remove that number which you added, right? And try to look for the next number that is there. So this is how you can get all the possible combination. And again, just look for the base condition. The basic thing about recursion is just look for the base condition. Yeah, that can be easily done. No worries. 